So here we are in South Philadelphia at a standard row home. We're going to do a health and safety inspection of the systems uh, to make sure everything's working properly here. Once we get through all that, uh, then we can take a look at the building envelope. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Hi, Hillary. Hey, I'm Chris. Hi, nice to meet you, Chris. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come in. I do notice occasionally that in the area around the, the dryer um, and the washer, which is right next to the hot water heater, there's occasionally a smell of gas. It's funny because, I mean, like I said, there's some days that I, that I occasionally smell, like right when I come in in that little, the front area. Uh-huh. There's a like, off-the-charts uh, gas leak. Yeah, that's a leaker, all right. Ooh. Soapy bubbles. So that product is basically like children's bubbles? Uh, no, this sweet. is more like uh, dishwashing soap. Okay. A concentrated and, dishwashing oh, look at liquid. That. And then what's bubbling is gas leaking out? That's right, yeah. What you want to do is get a plumber in here to fix that. Okay. So what I'm looking for now is a pressure difference, uh, which I compare, I would compare to a standard. Uh, and with this flue configuration, um, I wouldn't want the difference to be more than five pascals here. What that means is we close all exterior windows and doors uh, to seal the building envelope best we can. Uh, and then we turn on exhausting fans. So kitchen fan, bathroom fan. So we are at our worst case, and it's not significant. We were not able to create a lot of negative pressure down here uh, and now compete this flu compared to what our standard would be down here. So that's good. We passed so that test. So that's venting well yeah. then. Okay. This is a infrared thermometer. Mm -hmm. So it's just a point and shoot and wherever the laser goes it gives me a temperature reading. So 85 degrees on the wall, 88 degrees on the ceiling. Uh, 89 degrees here, 92. And so that implies that this is just not insulated. That's a pretty good guess, yeah. You know, you can, you can almost feel it. You, know, you can almost feel the heat radiating down on you. Yeah. You know, the top of the ceiling is about 87. You know, we saw 90 degrees in that room. And the floor is 64, 63, 64. So just as we thought, there's a lot of radiant heat coming down from your attic space. Uh, and it's really out-competing your air conditioning. Mm, it's not comfortable. Yeah. Which is annoying. <laughs> yeah, the white roof will definitely take care of that comfort right. issue for you. We already yeah. have a list for you. We already know what to do. We're still going to run the blower door to look for um, opportunities. I'm really motivated by sort of doing what's best as a consumer of energy. Um, so that I'm using as little as possible. It is a little bit also motivated by the fact that the house is uncomfortable, um, temperature-wise. So personally, what I end up doing is just sort of adding more fans or opening windows or even sleeping you know, on a different floor where it's cooler. Um, but it is uncomfortable upstairs. This is a kid's toy. <laughs> it's called the wizard stick. <laughs> it's a smoke generator. We can show you where the air is traveling. So the majority of air leakage comes from frame cavities, floors, walls, ceilings. Not so much the obvious things like windows and doors. Did you realize that all the cavities in your home are so interconnected? No. <laughs> right, meaning the wall cavities are more related to the pressures outside than right. the pressures inside. Right. Um, what kind of blower door reading did you get? 3400. Okay. So based on the size of the, the building, this place is pretty leaky. Extremely. And you can tell. That was one of those things that I was sort of aware of. Well, good. So there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, I came in just looking at this house from the street, and I thought, well, this is a simple box-shaped house. It's probably going to be very straightforward and, and fairly airtight. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was actually wrong uh, and found out that things are, are really interconnected and, and mm -hmm. leakier than what I had thought. So there's a lot of opportunity here and a lot of opportunity for savings. Right. Yeah.